Hey guys, welcome back to Flatback Effects. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make this collage Vox style animation. Now, if you're a Flatpak FX crew member, you can download the project file and all the media as well via the link in the description below. But this is what we're gonna be creating here today. Now, the first file here is this flickering newspaper effect, and the other file is this scratch effect or overlay. Now, include these files as part of the download for the Flatpak FX crew members. And the other thing that I've also sourced is just some of these images. Now, this will obviously depend on the theme that you've selected. But I include these photos here of Abraham Lincoln, as well as this map image that we're going to use. Now for this effect to work really well, you want to try and pick photos of the same person that are relatively from the same angle, but are different in the way that they're taken. So for instance, these images, some of these are color, some of these are just black and white. Some look like they're old style photographs. Now what I'm going to do is right click and create a new composition with my newspaper effect here. And we're gonna use this as the background for our animation. Now, the first thing I did was I just brought in my first layer here, and I'm just gonna kind of use this as a bit of a template to kind of work out where I want my collage to be. Then I'm just gonna grab my mask tool up here, and I'm just gonna make a mask. Now, this works really well when you create sort of odd shapes. So don't just create a box, use your pen tool, create some really odd shapes here, and this effect's gonna look a lot better. Now what I'm gonna do is grab another one here, and I'm gonna drag this one in here, just kind of reposition it. And with this one, I'm gonna position it behind, and I want it to kind of line up with this image. It doesn't have to be perfect, but just kind of roughly get it in the right position. And then with this one, I'm just gonna draw a really rough sort of shape here, doesn't have to be perfect and you can always go back and readjust this. I'm gonna grab another one in here, sort of layer this underneath, scale this down, roughly position this, something like this. So I'm just kind of creating all these different sort of odd shapes and it's just a matter of going through and then kind of layering all of these different images together. So this, this is before we start animating anything we're just gonna go through and make sure that all of these kind of line up. Now, once you've got a, got a rough shape going here, I recommend just kind of going through and messing around by kind of moving the mask around to kind of break up those lines. So this is the point that you're really trying to lay it out to get that look that you're going for. The other thing is, with these sort of animations, I like to try and create depth. Now, this is something I talk a lot about in my Animation Master course. You can also check that out. There'll be a link down in the description. In that course, I walk you through from the absolute basics of never using after, you know, never having used After Effects before, right through to creating all different types of animations and effects. And one of the things that I talk a lot about in there is layering, and that's basically how you create depth through 2D images. So one way is just by creating, using different colors and layering different textures or elements together. So just for instance, we can grab this map that I've got here. I'm gonna drag this in behind here and scale it down. Now I want to use this to kind of bring a bit of that color back into my image. So with this, I'm gonna kind of bring this. And what I can do is if I come up here, I can add the tint function and I'm just gonna kind of make this a yellow. So that's gonna help bring a lot of that sort of color back into our image. Now you can also do the same thing if I copy that tint. I can also paste that onto any of these other layers that need you know, adjusting. So if this one I wanna make more black and white or I wanna give it a slight tint, I can do that. That's just a way of making it less complicated. If you're finding that something in your image is really distracting, then just try that technique of adding some tint to it and minimizing the impact of that layer. You can also add on the background, you can add some, you know, you can add a different blending mode that'll help sort of merge that map to your background layer. So you don't necessarily have to just leave it as a solid layer. You can go through and add a bit of blending mode to that. Now that I've kind of got that in the right place, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna create a new layer. So I'm not gonna have anything select, I'm gonna create I'm gonna select my pen tool, make sure there's no fill, and have a stroke line of about nine. And then what I'm going to do is basically just start 
creating one line. I'm going to click away and then start again. And what I'm going to do with this is I'm just going to kind of create lines to make it look like they're running through my image. So I click away again and then I can kind of create another one that sort of runs around maybe something like that. So we've got this kind of squiggly line. Now you can go through and adjust each of those line thicknesses, but something else I also did in my original one was I added some texture to that. So I came up here and I added some roughened edges. And if I turn this mask line off so we can see what we're doing, I'm gonna scale up on this, scale up on the edge sharpness and then come down to the complexity and scale up on this and it's going to kind of give this texture effect now you can bring more of that back by scaling up and down on this and if you need to go in you can double tap u to bring up the different stroke lines and then slightly scale these down so you can bring this one down to say seven you can even bring up the thickness of one of them that's going to kind of add a different texture to each of them. So this is just another way of adding a little bit of depth to make it look like there's a three-dimensional line that's sort of going around. You can also add in some drop shadow. If you want to add over the top of that, you can also add, say, a drop shadow to your background layer, add a bit of distance, and then also some softness. That's going to create a bit more depth again. You don't have to do that but it's something else if you want to add, again, some depth. So now that we've kind of got that in the right position, now I want to start animating it. Now the key to animating this sort of stuff or the way that I approach it is to try and mix it up as much as possible. Now the first thing I'm going to do to all of these layers is I want to add a little bit of a wiggle transition. So what I'm going to do is select all of those, hit P on the keyboard, and then I'm going to Alt click on that stopwatch and I'm going to paste in my wiggle expression. So for this, I'm using wiggle open bracket one comma five, and that adds just a little bit of movement to those images. Now, if I do that for the rest of these, you can see that we kind of get this interesting sort of three dimensional sort of movement in it, which makes it look a lot better. If I hit P on that one, I'm also going to add it to that layer. And if I also add it to my shape path, and it's just gonna add some movement into the entire thing. It just makes it look a lot better. And it really kind of draws your eye, which is really important in all this sort of animation. You really wanna try and draw the viewer into where you want them to be looking. So you can do that through camera movement, or you can do that through adding these sort of effects like wiggle expressions and things like that. Now, one way that I can also add more is I can create a position keyframe here for this bottom layer. And then I can just animate this layer into position. I can also turn on motion blur. And that adds a bit of movement to that layer, sort of animating it in. Can make this easy ease. The other thing I'm gonna do is just kind of speed this up. And I'm also just going to kind of come in here and flatten out this curve to kind of make it look a little bit more interesting. Now you can kind of go through and do this to all of them here or the layers that you want to kind of move into position or have fly into position. The other thing you can also do is instead of using the position, you can also add some scale. So to this layer in particular, what I'm going to do is hit S and I'm going to add a scale keyframe. I'm going to turn off that lock point. So I'm going to basically create a scale function here, sort of moving this from zero and what I'm going to do is then hit Y on my keyboard and move the anchor point somewhere up here. And that's going to kind of create this movement. Also add some easy ease. Maybe speed that animation up, add a bit of motion blur to all of these layers. I'm also going to add a scale function to my background layer here. Make these easy ease as well, just to kind of keep in line with that animation. And that's starting to look pretty good. I'm also going to add to my shape path, I'm also going to add a trims path by coming down here. And I can create an animation by, if I change this to individually, creating an endpoint. Maybe something starting from back here. And then as it moves across, I'm just going to animate this on. So I can also kind of animate that on. I can create a easy ease. 
You can even do this simultaneously if you want to mix it up a bit. But again, you're kind of animating them on. Another technique is to also stagger them. So just kind of move these off center and that'll help kind of make it a bit less cluttered. The other thing I'm going to do is move all of these animations back. What I want to do with this layer here is I want to add a bit of a flicker effect. So with this layer, I'm going to kind of have it flicker with different looks. So just like I did here at the start, this layer is sort of flickering. So what I'm going to do is have it sort of start maybe back here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to split that layer and I'm also going to split this into say four different parts. Now what I can do with this layer is if I come up here, I'm holding Alt on my keyboard and with that layer selected, I'm gonna drag in a new layer here. And what I can do with this is sort of move this mask position and then move this up like this grab another layer here, select another one, holding Option and Alt on my keyboard. I'm focusing on the eyes, but I'm just kind of mixing up the position of that mask. So I'm roughly trying to get them all in the same position. You can go through and readjust these, but it's really just kind of going back through. You can move all of these back slightly to kind of speed them up. And you can also make them different, you know, lengths if you want to speed up that whole animation or make it a bit more speed it up or slow it down, however you want to do it. But that's basically how I made that little animation here at the start. The other thing I did do to it was I added a null object. So I just right clicked and created a new null object, lined up that null here at the beginning, moved it down here. And with all of those layers, I just parented them to that null and I created a scale keyframe by scaling this back and then bringing this up to 100. So that kind of added this little bit of a scale of that layer over the top. And then it's just a matter of kind of going back through and readjusting those layers so that they start to all sort of animate in together and that's how I created that look. The other thing you can do is also add a texture layer over the top. So this is the texture layer that I'm using here. So I'm gonna scale this up to sort of fit over the top. And then I'm gonna make the blending mode on this one add. And I can also hit T on the keyboard and scale this down. So that kind of creates that flicker effect that you see over the top. This is something that Vox do a lot is add these sort of textures over the top. Going back to my original composition here, I've added that texture over the top. The other thing I also did was I right clicked and added a new adjustment layer. And then to that, I added some grain and I also added some sharpen. So the grain, I basically just added that over the top and used these settings, set this to final output. And that just adds a bit of noise. You may not be able to see it on the YouTube compression, but basically that's how I did that. And then I also added an unsharpened mask and that just sharpens the whole thing up, really bringing out a lot of that texture and so forth. It really kind of takes that animation to that next level. The last thing I did was add some text here by just using poppins and then extra bold. And then underneath that, I just created these boxes by using a fill color drag these out underneath. And then to all of those layers, I also added that wiggle effect and that kind of gives it this wiggling motion. You see Vox doing this a lot. The edges are quite sharp. So I really wanted to roughen up those edges. So that's exactly what I added to this. I added a roughen edges to these images. Now, if I just turn off this and you're looking at this layer here, you can see it kind of adds that texture to the edges. These are the settings that I used here. You can add rough and edges by coming up here and searching for it. And that's how I did it. I just added this same thing that we had added to this line effect, added that over the top, and that's how I got that finished effect. So again, as part of my download for the Flatpak crew members, you'll see this exact thing in the project files. So you'll be able to look a little bit closer and see exactly how I've added all of the different layers and effects. That's it for this video. If you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up. You can watch this video over here next if you wanna learn more about creating animations inside of After Effects. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.